Hello and welcome back to Armor 3 Overthrow. The first thing you may notice upon opening this video is I've had a bit of a makeover. We've thrown the ghillie away. Let's get this man to stop so we can have a better look at him. So he's wearing the same gear I am. He's got the special purpose helmet and the special purpose suit. Now this helmet is kind of broken. It's armor level 5. It has night vision. It has thermal vision. It's just very strong overall, and the special purpose suit is the highest armor value piece of underclothing in the game. Like, it's not a vest, it's just your standard clothing. It's very, very tough. And the armor that we're wearing is from the Halo mod. It's just some generic level 3 heavy urban camouflage armor, the M52A to be precise. I did want to potentially use some of the Spartan armor, but I did a bit of research and I found out why it's not working. They changed the armor to need a specific skeleton, which means that if you haven't placed down the unit as a Spartan skeleton, because they're like 7 feet tall, you can't equip the armor properly, so we're unfortunately not going to be able to use that suit. However, this stuff is pretty damn good. So the weapon we have is an AK-15. These are the 7.62 AK rifles which have 2 round burst. We have a PBS-1 suppressor on it, a hammer sight, and I've put 75 round drum mags in them. And one great thing about what I've done here is if I come into this tent, then I go to recruit the rifleman. If I recruit him, so our third guy, wherever he is. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, he just spawns in with this stuff. So now we can just create a team of badasses on demand. 75 round drum mags and 7.62 rifles with powerful armor. The underlay clothing is going to do most of the work since we're only wearing armor level 3 stuff, but it looks cool and I really wanted to use some of the Halo gear, so I'd rather do this than wear a max armor level vest or a, an explosive resistant one, for example. I've also bought this fuel vehicle here because the helicopter's fuel tank was completely shot, which meant that it was out of fuel and I can't really take this into a town to use the petrol station, so this is how we're going to have to fill that thing up. IFV back there, all nice and full, ready to go too. Oh, there was quite a lot to show you there that's happened since last time, but I should probably get on to today's plan. So, I did mention that after we've taken the port, which we have, our next objective is the factory. Now, we could just use the factory, but this outpost is so close to it that any time we try and take a military vehicle from here that we've produced, we're just going to get spotted. So we really need this outpost. Regina here is probably where we're going to stop this attack from, and I have bought a little house down here that we can stage it from. We're going to scout this place out, ideally work out where they keep their static weapons, so that we can use an MRL to take those out, and then we can bring just a vehicle full of the troops that we've got in to take the place over and to meet the resistance. Now to prepare for this, we need to remember that there are outposts in the area, so we have the radio towers here, which are outposts, there's a radio tower there, and the airbase right here. So potentially, we could see a large number of attacks coming in. Now, Regina is pretty well positioned that we should be able to, assuming we can buy these houses down here, uh, this house down here, and then we've got like a section here, a uh, section down here as well, and then probably this road too, just in case. We can do what we did before and stall a lot of these units. So we could just go down there and buy some houses and board the place up. Now if you remember, that didn't really help us out when it came to dealing with the aircraft. They still managed to get quite a lot of units in just by flying them in. And this is going to segue into me showing you how the port works. So let me just get down to the port building. I didn't show you this last time, specifically because I wanted to tie it into today's antics. So now we can import, and we have a list of most things in the game. Now I wasn't exactly correct about this because not everything is available um, after checking through here. It seems like some things are actually exclusive to the factions. So like I couldn't find the Halo weapons in here that were in the faction, the assault rifle, specifically George's machine gun, and the DMR. However, if I type in AA for example into the search bar, Oh look, there's some Titan AA missiles. If I type in Titan instead, perhaps, 
look, we've got all these Titan launchers here and the Titan missiles, so we could get one of the compact Titans. Should we get one of these sand ones? Oh, they're expensive. We have to import them 10 at a time, so we're going to... In fact, we have some of these in our box. Let's just get some of the missiles. So these are a bit cheaper. So we can just import 10 anti-aircraft missiles. They're now in this vehicle's inventory. Now then, there are two other objectives I had for today. One of them involves the helicopter, and the other one involves the factions. We'll do the helicopter one first. What I want to do is I actually want to go get Cool in the gang and bring them over here so we can use them for the fight. They've just been stuck on the other island and not doing anything. So that's why I wanted to fuel this helicopter up. Now then, I did order them earlier to head out to this ferry here. And hopefully I can find a path to get there that doesn't involve flying over a base because I might just get shot down. So let's go see if we can pick them up. Alright, away we go. Now this little bird has a minigun and hydras. So we need to be careful not to make too much noise with this thing, otherwise they might try and hunt us down. Ooh, and now I'm in the air, I can actually see over the air bases. So sort of like no fly zones. So I kind of want to come down here first, don't I then? Oh no, Nits has seen me from somewhere. I've flown over an outpost? I'm near a town, that might be it. I think I might need to get a little bit more height for this. I did see a jet flying around earlier, after I refueled this thing. So I feel like they sent an interceptor because they saw me inside this vehicle, which is... Not good, to say the least. Also, those ruins down there, I kind of want to set up an FOB there. I want that to be our primary base, if we can get into it. So we'll have to make a note of that. Oh, can nobody else get in because of the guns? Oh no, that's an absolute shame. That's really annoying. Oh, all of this effort to be thwarted. I thought they'd at least be able to like sit on the back here, but I guess with the miniguns in there, they're just not allowed to, to sit there. Well, cool in the gang, you are, once again, on your arm. I'm sorry, I tried. Oh no, they're stealing my, my helicopter. Get out, it's mine. After all of that, we're just gonna take it straight back. Ah, oh, right, well, I'll be back as soon as I get this thing to base, and then we'll go do some building. So, as you might expect, some of the areas that we've been able to board up have been quite easy. In fact, these buildings have lined up perfectly, so we've got just a complete U-shape here. So that is this side down here, blocked off completely. We also went down here. I could fast travel over there, but I don't think it'll let me, considering how close I am, so we'll just drive over anyway. Oh, there's a bit of gunfire going off there. I think there's a gang getting involved around here. So I think this one was a little bit less tidy. Yeah, because there's only the one building here, but I have managed to make a bit of a U-shape here as well. The whole point of making the U is so that when something collides with it, they'll sort of like back up and try and drive off. Hopefully they collide again. So we'll back up, try and drive off. Back up, try and drive off. Just ignore the thing at the top of the screen, by the way. Um, I'm actually recording this part of the video last because I've had an absolute ton of technical difficulties recording this one. Also, look at all those men. They are out in force right now. So, yeah, we've got this section blocked off here too. Now, if I head up to the top here, you'll see we've got, once again, another set of very well-placed buildings. So this blocks into here, and I've put a little blockage between there as well. I don't think you're getting any vehicle of a reasonable size through that gap. I can barely fit this thing through there, and it takes a bit of effort. So unless they're coming in on quad bikes, I think we're fine. So we've also got this blocked off here. And then I believe I went, yeah, all the way up there next. So let's fast travel up there for this next one. And you'll see that this, on this side, a little bit patchy, but I think it'll do the job. You go any further out than that and you're going to risk driving straight into the drink. Maybe I could do with patching that bit there up, actually? You know what, while we're here, let's do that. Let's take some funds. And I'll place that barrier down right there. Okay, that just reinforces that a little bit, so then we've got this here blocked up as well. The only place I haven't blocked up is this. 
because I don't really have a building I can buy to uh, to do that with. These ones are too far away from the road. I'd have to go all the way up here to be able to block that off, and that just goes to nowhere. So we'd have to keep going down this way, and... Yeah, there's just no buildings until we get to that radio tower there. So this one is a bit of a wash on this side, but hopefully if they come down south here and come through Labaka, they'll get blocked by that one there. I doubt they will though, so there's just one avenue of uh, vehicles coming in we're going to have to deal with still. So if we're going to be controlling this factory, the next thing for us to do is to go for an explore and find some nice blueprints for us to print out of the thing. You know, the vehicles we want to make to give to our army. So let's see how that went. I figured we could do with a bit of a scouting mission, by which I mean combing the whole map for faction blueprints, which is why I've got a map of Tanoa up here. I went around and took a look at everything each faction in each town or village has to offer, hoping that one individual faction will have everything I need, so I only have to gain rep with one of them. And here's my results. In Ovale, there's the Colonial Police. Warthogs, Pelicans, and Unarmed Falcons are on offer here. I'm looking primarily for a troop transport, ideally airborne, and some heavy armor like a main battle tank, so the Pelican here is interesting to me. Also, it's a Halo faction, so that's just free points in their favor. In Savu, there's the LDF. There's plenty more choice here, including an MBT like I wanted, as well as a couple IFVs, but the helicopters on offer here don't seem that large. In Luganville, there's the Vipers. They have very little to offer, just some off-road transports. In Vagalala, there's some arid Russians. As with all CSAT-aligned factions, they have some fantastic vehicles, with an MBT on offer, as well as some decent helicopter transports. In particular, the Tigris was of interest to me. It's not an MBT, but if you've ever used the gun on that thing, it may as well be. It's a monster in both its intended role as an anti-air tank, as well as against anything else you are able to point the gun at. Further down their list is a bigger selection of tanks, so this faction is looking like a strong contender so far. In Nasua, there's the Insurrectionists. Another Halo faction? This one actually has a much wider range of vehicles on offer. Falcons, which are actually armed, a bigger selection of Warthog weaponry, and more Pelicans. Again, ones which are armed. They have more armored vehicles here too, so I'm thinking this might be the one, but we're going to take a look everywhere just in case still. In Modigat, there's more Vipers. Just the same off-road transports here, nothing interesting. In Lafoa, there's the FIA. They have an IFV on offer, but other than a couple off-roads with weapons in the back, there's nothing here I can't just buy from a garage. In Bleric, there's Iran. Another CSAT faction, they have the Tigris, some helicopter transports, and a wider selection of IFVs. They also have a wider selection of MBTs, so it seems like this faction would be a good pick for a varied arsenal. Finally, they also have the CSAT VTOL transports, which are really cool. I'm thinking that if the Halo vehicles turn out to be paper thin, like the US vehicles in this game are, we'll use Iran's blueprints. In Bois Bois, there's a Raven security. They have a couple CSAT vehicles, but nothing heavy enough to suit our needs. In Lai Lai, there's Argana. Yet another CSAT faction, they do have some heavier vehicles, like an MBT, but they don't have a Tigris, so if we were going to go with a CSAT faction, most of the other available ones would be more worthwhile to go with than them. In Tarvu, there's the AAF. They have an MBT and a decent sized helicopter, but I think based on variety I'd be better off with a CSAT faction still. In Mwakeba, there's the desert variety of US. The Chinook would make for a great airborne transport with a large carry capacity, but they offer nothing else of value compared to the other factions. In Tuvanaka, there's two factions. First, China. At the top of the list is the Tigris, followed by a wide variety of transport helicopter configurations. They also had a decent range of MBTs, as well as the same VTOLs Iran had. I think China is on par with Iran for blueprints, but we have to sail out to the heavily NATO-controlled island to get to China, so I think Iran is just more convenient to deal with. The second faction here is Russia. Again, Tigris and transport helicopters are here. There's also a few MBTs on offer, but again, this NATO-controlled island is hard to work around with how many outposts are here. 
There was also a town called Dudestill, which unfortunately didn't have a faction in it. I did have a crappy joke brewing for this one, but unfortunately I had to flush that one since there was no faction there. Just for clarification as well, if there's any town or village here that sounds like I butchered it, that was kind of deliberate. Anything I didn't think I could pronounce properly, I just winged it. But I think in conclusion here, we're going to work with the Halo Insurrectionists. And if the vehicles from that faction aren't durable enough, we will lean on CSAT and get our blueprints from Iran. Now, my favourite thing about having done all of that research and scouting around the entire map is that not long after I did all of that, I found out there was actually something better than what I'd found. I was maybe four, five operative transports into helping out the insurrectionists to get rep for them. When I came across Lakatoro here, which has two factions in, and I didn't spot this village before. It's really well nestled away. So while I was scouting around for everything, I just kind of blanked over this mountain range here that you can see on the elevation markers, because I didn't really think anything would be there. Well, how wrong I was. We have this faction here, the CAA, Colonial Administration Authority. And let me just show you the kinds of things that they've got. So we have Falcons, we have Warthogs, we have Scorpion Tanks, uh, and we have Pelicans. Now, there was an extra Falcon, an extra Scorpion, and an extra Pelican on this list. I've bought all three of those. Uh, that took quite a lot of money, I'm going to be honest. Let me think. The Pelican was about 16 mil. The Scorpion was about 8 mil. And I managed to find a Falcon which had a gun, but was actually as cheap as the non-armed ones. And that was about 350,000. And while I was messing around, I did actually buy the factory. So let's just pop down there, just because I want to show you how the blueprints work now. Alright then, so, here's our factory. But the magic happens in this box here. So if I open this, it's got nothing in it right now. What we can do is we can put things in this box, like steel, like plastic. And we can use those to make anything we like, really. So if I go into manage here, you can see I have the falcon, I have the pelican, and I have the Scorpion. I also reverse engineered a bandage, which you just click reverse engineer. And then if you have anything in this box, so let's say if I unequip my binoculars, you see I can now reverse engineer these binoculars, and that will appear in my factory list. So we want to focus on this little bit at the top here. It tells me what my input is, the time that it takes to produce, and the output. So this takes $300 plus one steel. It takes five minutes to produce, and we get 10 pairs of binoculars out of this. And if we look at the bandages, we put $6 and one plastic. It takes five minutes, and we get 10 bandages. The scorpion tank, on the other hand, takes almost 400,000, about 430 steel, five plastic, and about three real hours. It takes three hours to make a tank. And that's why I bought this now, because we're going to set this up. Then hopefully by the time I've finished the battle in the next video, we'll have these vehicles waiting here at the uh, the factory for us, ready to go. Now the Pelican, and now this goes into scientific notation very quickly. I think that's just 1.2 mil, but it takes 120 steel, 5 plastic, and 110 minutes, so almost 2 hours. The Falcon's a little bit more reasonable, 25,000, 30 steel, 2 plastic, and about three quarters of an hour. But we want to make a scorpion and a pelican, which means that we're going to need, ooh, like 600 steel. Only 10 plastic though. So there's two main ways we can get building resources like that. The business is here, like you see Red Spring Surface Mine, that will produce metal for us. I think it just straight up digs up steel. Uh, and then something like the lumber yard would give us wood for anything that needs wood. Some things I think need processing, but we can't use to build with. So like our sugarcane plantation down here, there's like a sugar factory up here somewhere. Yeah, sugar company, so we can make sugar with it to make it more valuable. So the businesses are very handy for this. In terms of steel, you can also break down wrecked cars for a little bit of steel at a time, but that takes quite a while to get a decent amount of steel going. And you can also buy these things from the tool shops in towns. But I've come down to Blue Pearl, we're going to have a look in the port and see how much this is going to set us back. I may need to do quite a few trips with this car as well, I don't know how much it can really hold. But I should be able to just add to this inventory infinitely. 
because it's doing it via script, not via player interaction. So let's see, if I'm to import steel, each steel is $44. Each plastic is 71. Well, we can just import 10 plastic, and that's enough. I do need to get some money out though. Okay, so I've withdrawn way too much money, but let's import the 10 steel, uh, the 10 plastic rather. And then probably just a thousand steel. So yeah, we got the 10 plastic, a thousand steel. To be fair, that was pretty cheap. Let's just import 100 plastic more. And then I'm gonna put this money away before I lose it. I do need to get it back out in a sec, but everybody knows what I'm like for this kind of thing. I'll crash into a tree or something, or I'll, I'll trip over a loose magazine. What we're going to want to do now is just transfer all of this into the cargo container. All right, so then if I check this box here, you can see we've got 1,000 steel, 110 plastic. Let's get some money back out. Now I can add a scorpion to the build queue. There we go. It's taking 172 minutes. Now I can also add a pelican to the build queue, which will then take... Well, it's not going to tell me, but you can see it takes 110 minutes. Currently still waiting on the scorpion to be produced. So the time that this takes is one big reason why I think we should still just straight up be importing stuff. Also, it didn't take my money from me, so I can only assume it's actually going to take out of the faction fund. So I'm just going to put that money back away. So yeah, now we just have like four or five hours to wait, so that's plenty of time for us to take over that outpost in the next video. It's taken the resources out of here. It doesn't appear to have taken the money, weirdly enough. I still have it in the resistance fund, and it didn't take money off of what I had on hand. So maybe it just doesn't take money, it just takes the resources. If that's the case, that's very good, because that makes things significantly cheaper. But let's get ourselves back to base to, uh, to sign off, I reckon. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to recruit a load of people from that tent over there, so we'll have all the same gear I'm using. We'll take this thing down with us. When we get it to the factory, we can reverse engineer it and just make a couple more if we really want to. But, since we've set up all of our defenses down here in Regina, what we'll probably want to do is fast travel this vehicle out to, like, here, where there's unlikely to be any police presence. So I can pop an MRL or two into there. Then we can move in with the vehicle. I can attack with, like, a small squad of men from the other side, maybe? So I can have, like, one squad move in with the IFV, and I can pincer them. It will be very easy to tell who's who, because NATO will be wearing things similar to what these guys have on. Because, I mean, it's gear that we've stolen from them. And I look like something out of a very bad Warhammer Halo crossover fanfiction. So, you know, we'll be able to see who's on our side, for definite. Now, I believe in this box, I think I dumped some anti-aircraft missiles in here? Yeah, we've got a couple AA missiles there. So we'll take this, probably the AT missile with us as well. And then that should give us the firepower to take out any vehicles that spawn in, particularly helicopters that can bypass our traps. But I don't think we're going to have too much issue taking it over, it's only a smallish outpost, but we definitely need to take control of that factory, otherwise we've just wasted all of our time and money getting the place set up. Because as much as I'm confident in the Scorpion being able to battle its way out of that outpost, I don't really want us to be producing other things that we then go and pick up and immediately become wanted and spread down by statics for. Especially when, if we try and take a pelican out of there, the nearby airbase may try and scramble a jet or something to intercept us. And that isn't fun. That ain't gonna work too well for us. But anyway, I'll call it here for today. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, of course, to the members and pledgers for supporting everything I do. You can drop by our Discord server, linked in the description, if you want to come and vote on games that I do videos and live streams on next, as well as a very welcoming and friendly community on there you can come and chat with. All the mods I've used today are also linked in the video description. But that's all from me. We'll take over that outpost next time around and we'll get that factory properly up and running. We'll make some real vehicles. I'll see you then. Goodbye.